Thank you, Baroness Armstrong, and thank you to the committee for the opportunity to give evidence today. Um, you asked for just a little bit about our background. So as you mentioned, I'm Chief Executive of the Yorkshire and Humber Academic Health Science Network. That's an organisation that works within the NHS, but also with academia and industry to support the adoption and spread of innovation and also to promote economic growth. In my spare time, I'm a board member of uh, Sheffield City Region Local Enterprise Partnership, sitting on business growth and resilience boards. And I'm also a board director of an organization called the Northern Health Science Alliance, which is a membership organization across the north of England here, which is made of the leading teaching hospitals, universities, and the academic health science networks themselves. Um, I agree with everything Jennifer said um, when she started her, her uh, conversation and, and content, particularly around leveling up being vague at the moment and requiring definition, but also around the, the importance of the wider social determinants of health when we're thinking about investment in health rather than investment in health care. A lot of the work that we've done on levelling up across Yorkshire and Humber has been around bringing our NHS colleagues towards this agenda, both in terms of a stronger recognition of their influence as anchor institutions themselves, Jennifer talked about the employment in a regional level, but also their buying power as procurers. But also, I think, to recognise the fact that there are other rooms in local places where levers are there to be pulled that are also going to have a fundamental impact on health in terms of out outcomes from a social determinants point of view. And we know from our work, but also from other great research, that there's strong intrinsic links between health improvements and economic growth, and that um, uh, health inequalities are both a cause and an effect of income inequalities. So good health enables us to take part in society, hold down a job, generate income, and it's key economic assets to invest in. But current health inequalities, particularly those across the North, I would say, um, and their impact on productivity show us that without investment in health, and I would stress investment in health rather than health care, going back again to the social determinants piece, I don't think the government would be able to achieve their broad ambition, which I think is the heart of your question here. Just a few statistics to frame my logic, I guess, and I'm grateful to my colleagues at the Northern Health Science Alliance for this research, but we know that 30% of the gap in productivity between the North and elsewhere in England is due to ill health. That equates to a cost to the UK of £13 billion each year in lost productivity as a direct result of ill health from Northern citizens. When we do experience a spell of ill health in the North, we are 39% more likely to lose our jobs compared to our counterparts in the rest of England. If we do get back to work, our wages are on average 66% lower. We also know that increasing the proportion of people in the North uh, to have good health by 3.5% would reduce the employment gap between the North and the rest of England by 10%. That was all a pre-pandemic situation. And we know that COVID-19 has laid bare stark inequalities that exist within our country in the North has felt the effect of this more than any other region. Um, Mortality rates were higher in the north than the rest of England, as I'm sure we all know, but the excess mortality that caused uh, will cost a potential six and a half billion pounds in lost productivity as a result. And also poorer mental health outcomes in the north of England as a result of COVID-19 are estimated to be costing us around five billion pounds in reduced productivity. So I mentioned that we need to recognise the distinction between the role of the NHS and the impact of the wider determinants of health when it comes to the cause of that hill health. We do have world-class NHS institutions across the North, and I am sure that there's not a chief exec who would say no to further funding, but when it comes to investment in health, we need to make, uh, we need to ensure that we reduce the productivity gap. We need to look at wider than health service delivery organisations and consider well-being, housing, good work and education, as my colleagues have mentioned previously. Investment in, in long, longer change in lifestyles towards prevention alleviation of chronic ill health well-being agenda that looks like active travel it looks like social prescribing it looks like a whole host of different interventions that don't necessarily sit within the NHS um, we also need to do more I would say to, to restate the business case of well-being I think particularly from a business perspective business benefits significantly from healthier and more productive workforces so I finish by saying that in my view health and the economy are bound tightly together intervention is designed to improve health and inclusive growth and well-being are in the interest of all local, regional, national parties, partners, businesses, communities, and it should be a shared priority and endeavour. Thank you, Richard.